Maybe it has been in our genes since time immemorial, the fascination for bundled light and the images that can be created with it. In any case, the history of film projection is much older than that of televisions and computers, and that's why we're dealing with it today, in addition to the perfect transfer of Super 8. We compare the projection of an analog film at 16 millimeters with a beamer projection of a digitized cinefilm. What are the differences between the projections and the information that is really on the film? In daylight, the original film looks comparable to the digitization. It doesn't matter if it's on a computer, TV, or projector. But when projected with a 16 millimeter projector or Super 8 projector from the 70s and 80s, the look is very different. It's much softer and warmer. Today, we don't just want to try to scan the film as perfectly as possible, but also to get a touch of the projection look of that time back into our digitization. To do that, in this case, we're using a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K and Film Digital Cinefilm Digitization System. Under no circumstances do we want to simply film a projected Super 8 reel because we don't get good quality that way. The film digital system includes a film transfer lens with spacer rings and adapter and an LED set with lighting. It may also include a projector modified by film digital to run at 16 and 2 thirds instead of 18 frames per second. There is a fine speed control for the exact regulation of the speed. But if you use a camera with a freely adjustable shutter speed, for example from Blackmagic or from Panasonic, then you can also work with a non-converted projector at 18 frames per second. And that's what we're going to show today. We have here the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, which, for an affordable price, offers all the possibilities that are important for film transfer. It's also available at www.filmdigital.com in a bundle along with an LED set and film transfer optics. The camera can shoot in ProRes or RAW and also record the Super 8 transfer in 4K. Especially if you have good source material, it's always advisable to scan at high resolution because many playback devices now play back 4K, whether they're TVs or Beamers. Especially in view of the future, you should keep that in mind. In addition to the completely freely selectable shutter speed, there are other interesting features for our particular application. One is the ability to operate the camera via USB remote control using a smartphone or iPad. Second, you can load your pre-made LUTs or lookup tables onto the camera and burn them directly into the shot. With these large amounts of data, it really makes sense that you can record not only to memory cards, but also directly to a connected SSD hard drive via USB-C. The full clean HDMI port with a large HDMI port is of course also an advantage of the Blackmagic Pocket 4K. We're using it today to connect a control monitor with a mirrored display. I'll take the lid off for now. The original lamp is removed, and I'll put the cable aside here. Here, I have an LED set with flying lead, because I'm not using a film digital projector here at the moment. With the projectors that film digital sells, the wire is built into the projector and the DMX cable that can be connected to the back of the projector housing. Up here is the power button, and below that is a toggle switch. When the blue light is on, you can then adjust the brightness in small increments. And when orange is lit, then you can adjust the color temperature to be more bluish or more yellowish. There are two memory locations for the settings. You don't have to pay attention to the right side. The LED can easily be mounted in the bracket of the original projector lamp. It's then secured with the existing wires. Now to the lens. I first put in a film that I know was shot in focus. I removed the original lens and I also removed the spring from the lens shaft. There are either two screws on the front of the lens shaft or just one, which is under the original focus knob. In that case, you just have to pull the focus knob off first and unscrew the bracket underneath. 
Then you can insert the threaded screw that Film Digital supplies. Of course, you must not screw it in too deep so that the optics can move freely at first. It's now I look into the lens shaft to see if perhaps the blade shutter is in the way and hides the image, but this is not the case. If that should be the case, there's a single frame transport button on the Bauer Studio projectors. The, optic the optics have an orange fine focus and a flexible C-mount ring to center the image. I only need rubber rings if the optics otherwise have a little too much play in the shaft. The first thing I do now is connect the lens to the camera, in this case via an included micro four-thirds adapter. Depending on the sensor size, one or more spacer rings are placed between the lens and the adapter to achieve the correct image size. The more or longer distance rings, the larger the image. We check if the orange focus ring can be turned freely in both directions and is not at the stop. But now, we first set the rough focus by moving the optics in and out of the shaft. Once the image is reasonably sharp, we carefully tighten the grub screw in the lens shaft with an Allen key and of course the screws in the front as well if there are any. Before we make further adjustments, it's advantageous to set the framer of the Super 8 projector to about center. Then we have room to move up and down afterwards. Next, we align the image in the center of the camera monitor. I again use an Allen key to loosen two of the four screws on the C-mount ring so that I can then move the camera freely up, down, right or left and then I tighten the screws again. Just at the end, I adjust the fine focus on the orange ring until the film grain is as sharp as possible. It's best to use the camera's magnification function for this. The orange focus ring does not necessarily have to be fixed. Now let's move on to the camera settings. So that I can see the image better, I've connected a monitor to the camera and connected it via HDMI. The advantage is that this monitor mirrors the image horizontally so I can see everything the right way around. Because it can't mirror vertically, I connected the monitor overhead to the camera. We first decide on the ProRes 422 file format and a frame rate of 25. The files generated are about 4 gigabytes per minute in 4K. If you want to get really deep into post-processing, you'll want to go for the Blackmagic RAW, which you can color grade perfectly afterwards with DaVinci Resolve, even with the free version. Now we set the shutter speed to 1 54th of a second. This corresponds to 3 times 18 frames, the original speed of the projector. With a projector converted to 16 and 2 thirds, we would choose the shutter speed of 1 50th of a second, so 3 times 16 and 2 thirds seconds. Almost any camera can do that. Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras have a lot of aperture stops of dynamic range and a very good low light behavior because of the dual ISO system. This is important because the main problem with any film transfer is the dynamic range. Less sophisticated transfer systems or incorrect use can result in burned out highlights or black areas with no drawing. Even if I use a black magic, it's obviously important not to use more ISO than necessary. That's why we do an ISO test run with about half of the lighting level. With this film, we decide to use 400 ISO after that. We then control the nuances of the lighting on the fly with the LED set. For the color temperature, as a basis, we first set the white balance of the camera to sun or outdoor, and we won't change this setting. The fine details of the color temperature we regulate during the shooting with the LED set. The camera is permanently connected to the projector via the lens. Nevertheless, we choose the Bluetooth remote circuit here, so we start and stop the transfer remotely to avoid any shaking. So now to the LUTs. We have in our archive, on the one hand, warm Kodak films, and on the other hand, Agfa films with a blue cast. For this reason, we've already designed two different LUTs, which we now load onto the camera via our hard disk. 
Of course, it's not necessary, but we want to get everything out of it to make the transfer as good as possible and to recreate a bit of the projection look of the 70s and 80s. There are, of course, countless ready-made LUTs from various manufacturers that you can try. And now to the projector. For threading, always take the first switch option, 1 o'clock, on the Bauer brand. Remember to switch to 3 o'clock before playing, otherwise the image will be unsteady. Please always make sure to use white start tape if possible and to cut the beginning of the film or punch it with a clipper. To get a proper overscan, that is, really not to cut anything, you can expand the film gate yourself on all electronically controlled projectors. First, turn off the power and then select the leftmost switch position to carefully remove the film gate. You can remove this small cover frame with a cutter, for example. This way, you'll have more film area. During the transfer, bad splices can cause the framer to jump up or down. Correct the offset of the frame with the original framer knob of the projector. It can also happen that the film jumps out of the gripper, for example, due to perforation damage, which can be heard and seen immediately. Pressing the correction button helps here. The capture is now recorded in real time and has very good quality on the SSD hard drive in 4K. As post-processing, only the vertical mirroring has to be done unless you've already mirrored during the transfer with a suitable hardware such as Cross Converter from Decimator Design. Because of the burned-in LUT, the recording slightly resembles the projection with a Super 8 or 16 mm projector. And maybe when we watch the digitized films with our family or friends on the TV or Beamer, we feel somewhat transported back to the old days of film projection. If you'd like to have the digitization with the film digital system explained to you once again in detail and individually, simply register for the free live webinar at www.filmdigital.com.